All right, I got some more good u uh, news about this uh, lead-free homemade rechargeable battery that I showed in my last video that used the um, manganese dioxide out of a zinc carbon battery, the cheap ones you get at the dollar store. And then uh, I was using charcoal for the electrodes and decided that I could probably use the electrode right out of the battery. And yeah, it worked. It worked really, really good. <clears throat> and that's the carbon rod that comes out of the carbon zinc batteries that you get at the at the store, the cheap ones, the D cells. And you have to take it apart and take these pieces off of it, and then uh, carefully get the manganese dioxide out, and then rinse it to get out the the um, zinc or or other um, chloride chemical. Uh, out of it. You have to rinse it. But that's uh, manganese dioxide with plain old Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. And all I did there is after I rinsed it out with the coffee filter and the distilled water, I just poured some of this Epsom salt crystals in the mixture and mixed it up. And then I mixed up a mixture of uh, water and Epsom salts and rolled the electrodes up in a paper towel one at a time and then on top of one another and then dip the whole thing in the Epsom salts and water and it formed up immediately using a six volt battery at about a volt. Now if you're gonna do this <clears throat> do yourself a favor when you build this thing before you put a charge on it before you slap it with the charge take a reading right here with your multimeter and make sure, make absolutely sure that you don't have any kind of a galvanic cell formed between the tin coating on your clip lead and your carbon electrode. If there's a film of water and it's not a real hard contact, you can develop a battery right there, a galvanic battery. And that happened to me on one of the cells I was testing. And it ate up the clip lead. Uh, the uh, clip lead became the anode, the, the uh, carbon became the cathode, and uh, it ate it up. So make really sure before you charge this and start doing your testing that you have no galvanic situation going on there first. And then it formed up immediately at about a volt. That's just under one volt uh, using a six volt battery. And uh, this was better than the, the last thing that I tried. So let me show you how it runs this motor. Um, I don't know how long this is going to last. It might last two hours, but I don't really care. What I care about right here is that it worked. And uh, that's all I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at pure research on uh, homemade batteries. Something you can make in your kitchen that's not too dangerous, that uh, is uh, very, very, very inexpensive and that uh, the home experimenter can do that they can take a common item that was one dollar at the dollar store for two of those this was a dollar for a whole thing of that that's free and uh, you take the chemical out of the battery which is the manganese dioxide with a couple other uh, chloride type of chemicals you got to get those out of there you got to wash them out wash them out otherwise you'll contaminate it and there might be some other chemical in there that's uh, not making this pure but all I can tell you is that folks it worked and uh, it, it runs this uh, little motor here quite well now I was hoping I was really hoping that it would run this but there's just not enough surface area and enough po power out of that little cell there to run this now if it had been a regular battery like that of course it would run this really great so you have not made a very strong battery there but what you've done is you've made it rechargeable. And I don't know how many times that can be recharged. And like I say, I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't really care. Uh, all I wanted to do was come up with something that I hadn't done before. Maybe somebody else had, but uh, this was a new one for me. Anyway, that's the latest with a homemade battery project. Thanks for watching.